Howdy folks, this is Manic Mark, the real fake outsider artist, coming to you from the bunker system located underneath the art villa, found somewhere in the jungles in the Midwest. And uh, today, it's just a wacky day. I've got a pile of stuff to go through today, and uh, I, don't, I don't even know if 10 minutes will cut it. So uh, uh, I can just start out. This is the, the process of discovering what, I don't know. And today the process is discovering um, the rest of the story behind uh, Penis Man, which started out as a commentary on um, uh, chemicals that are sold to enhance one's private parts if you're a male, and certain things that can happen, side effects and so forth and so on, and it uh, segued into this character, uh, Penis Man. So, and, and Penis Man episode number one, if you'll remember, Penis Man uh, a quick recap here, um, and again, this is serious art, so if this offends you, turn the channel. Uh, Penis Man has to go to the hospital because he's been impaled by Papaya Man. Um, it, it, I know I'm mispronouncing that, but I did it on purpose because I think it's cute. Okay, um, actually I've written here Pariapism Man, but I've since changed that to Papaya Man. So Papaya Man is his character who has this evil black jizz and he impales people. Well, he did the, okay. So, he's in the, uh, Penis Man is in the hospital with this, uh, you know, stiff weenie that's almost four hours. And as we all know from the commercials, if you go over four hours, you're in big trouble. Um, so, he, so he's in the hospital and he's trying to, he's trying to get everything set. Something needs to help him, right? Okay, so that's the, set, that's the setup for the next painting. But before we get, into the next painting, I thought, well, there's, this is getting to be so complicated, I need to document uh, the, ca the characters. So I'm just starting with the characters, and I don't know where this is all going, but usually when you do something like this, I guess, you probably have character sketches, and, and um, this is going, this is, I flushed out uh, Penis Man here, and I'll probably put this up on the screen so you can look at it a little bit better, or do something with it, do one of those camera th jerky things that I do. Uh, recently. Um, Penis Man, he's, he's an all-American, he, so he fights for American uh, truth, judge, justice, and an and occasional extra marital fling because, after all, he's he's Penis Man, so his, his, blood, his blood supply is full of some kind of radioactive proton mix of sperm and blood. That's the thing. That would have to be a piece like you, the history piece where you go back and find out how Penis Man became Penis Man. So, I'm apparently not done with this series of painting yet. Um, so there he is. So he says, I walk softly and carry a big stick. Because generally he's pretty mild-mannered. He's got the cigar, kind of like the you know, ex-military thing. Maybe he came from the military background. And uh, so I've got him there with his big whacker, which is his, basically his weapon. So the superpowers, I was thinking, what could he have? superpowers. Well, the giant whacker, and it inflates instantly to fight crime and for hot sex, because I'll get to his alter ego, alter ego uh, and that's about it. A uh, giant crime-fighting thingy. And, oh, uh, can instantly, I, I thought, well, that's not enough. He needs an extra power, at least one extra power. So right now, the extra power is he can lube up his body instantly, so he can slide into tight spaces. So an instant sheen can develop all over his body through his body pores. Oh, and he's the pubis fest spokes hero, uh, one of them. And um, so there you go. There's the there's Peace Man. And uh, so so to follow up with the alter ego, which all superheroes have apparently. Uh, Peace Man's alter ego is Harry Dick, and Harry Dick is a, a porn star. So that's his day job. Penis' Man's day job is as a porn star. And, um, and actually, he's very good at it, as you can imagine, you know, with this, this radioactive proton sperm and blood mix in his, in his rush, rushing through his system constantly. He has no problems in dealing with uh, the, the porn stars. In this case, it's a pile of porn starlets. There's the director, and the director says, you nailed it, Dick. And you can see that they're, like, happy and way tired out. So. There you go. There he is, doing his day job, making money for the wife. He's bringing home the bacon, so to speak, for his wife, who is Prego Woman. Now, oh. her character, this is, it's, it's actually kind of sad because 
even though he has this, you know, this proton blood thing going on, and his day job is having sex all day long, constantly. And then he goes out at night, and he has to, you know, whack villains over the head with his giant penis. He has, he has no energy for his wife because of this lifestyle he has to live. See, this is the reality thing, the superhero reality thing, where, you know, what they do during the day and, and in the evening affects their whole life, and it's kind of like the downside that they're constantly fighting. But in, in the results of that, that his wife, a Prego woman, is never satisfied because he can't keep it up long enough to make her happy. And but his, his proton fueled sperm is so strong that she's always pregnant. Okay, so she's bitter. She's a very bitter woman because one, he doesn't satisfy her because he's he's too quick, and she's always pregnant, which was a real drag for her. So she becomes a superhero, and um, so she's put makes up this costume and has these superpowers, and I thought, well, what is her superpower? So I flushed this out from the first draw, and she's changed a little bit. She has this little headdress she wears, and it's, uh, it's, it's got a radar in it. It's called Vagiray, and it detects out-of-control testicles, you know, within a certain radius. Maybe it's like it picks up testosterone or something. So anyway, it's like this radar where she can find evil, evil villain um, men, and which is basically, she's not interested in female villains. It's just really putting male villains in their place. It's probably like a real sad control issue on her part. Um, so other power she has, and this was suggested by uh, Bart Schultz, was, which was uh, the spermicide cannons on her wrist. Well, I've got, I think one spermicide cannon is, is plenty. So when she finds a male that's like, looks at her kind of like, hey, you're kind of hot, she immediately just sp sprays him with spermicide. Oh. That's the end of whatever kind of thing that would happen there. And she also has this really magical power. Now, I'm probably going to get in trouble with this, but she has a backpack on her back. And it's it's full of two or three um, babies, so she can saddle any single man with an unwanted child at any moment, and that's a powerful superpower, I think, because there's no villains that I know of that want to be saddled with a child, because then they'd have to stay home to take care of the kid at night. They're not going to be able to go out and steal and do, you know do evil, that sort of thing. They have to stay home to take care of the kid. And lastly, and this is no favorite of uh, Penis Man. But she's got this like clamp with teeth in it and a chain that can sh shoot out of her uh, vagina and do whatever she wants to do with it. I mean, you could, there's a lot of uses for that. But fortunately, Penis Man is so impervious to any kind of, and he does it so quickly. That could be the reason. Think about it. That's probably her fault. Maybe it's not an energy issue. So there she goes. She's also going to be a penis fest, and um, that's it.